So the name of the talk tonight is How to Cut Your Workout Time in Half and Achieve Better Results. So how many people in here work out? Good. So just about everybody works out. So um, you enjoy working out? Sometimes it's a little bit like work, right? Yeah. So what you're going to learn tonight is that you may not need to work out as much as you think that you do, um, and that it may not be as good for you to work out too much. So I'm an emergency medicine doctor, and I also am board certified in internal medicine. I have an office in East Brunswick, New Jersey. It's called MD Wellness and Aesthetics. And you can reach us at MD Wellness and Aesthetics. I'm sorry, MD Wellness, MD .com. Um, I will be posting this uh, talk. We're videotaping it tonight. It will be on YouTube. It will be on my website. So if, if you know people that missed it, you can invite them to check it out. Also, my previous talks. This is the third talk I'm giving here at Rahway uh, Hospital Wellness Center. Those are posted on um, my website. So let's get started. Exercise myth number one, the best way to strengthen your heart and prevent heart disease is through aerobic exercise. This is not necessarily true, and I'm going to show you scientific evidence behind all the statements that I make. Exercise myth number two, if workouts are not giving us the results that we want, we must work out more. Okay? You want to get bigger or stronger or faster or whatever, you just got to keep pushing more, more, and more. This is not true because we all hit that plateau, and we found that there may be diminishing returns. I'm going to explain why that may be. And lastly, athletes are examples of perfectly healthy human beings. They are not necessarily as healthy as you may think they are. And overtraining is very dangerous, extremely. People that engage in marathons, triathlons, so-called elite athletes, football players, professional wrestlers, hockey players, baseball players, all these people actually do not live as long as your average person. They all have shorter lifespans, and many suffer from chronic degenerative diseases, not just joint disease either, but also other diseases as well. I found this little blurb somewhere, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, but what is the life expectancy of world-class athletes? Not so good. The average age of the elite athlete is 67. That's almost 10 years younger than the average American. We're talking about elite athletes. The average life expectancy of an NFL player is 58 years of age. Now, you may say, well, what about steroids and other things? And yes, that certainly comes into play. Professional wrestlers, in general, are dropping dead in their 30s and 40s. Not good stuff. Let's look at a specific type of athlete, a sprinter. They tend to be very, very lean, very muscular, powerful, and explosive. And these, these are some pictures of some elite sprinters. I mean, notice the, this guy is huge. There's no fat on him. This woman is very lean, very muscular, very powerful. Again, you see nice muscles, very lean, healthy looking, lean, muscular. How about an endurance athlete? Let's compare our bodies. Now, we're, I just showed you some elite endurance uh, power athletes. How about elite endurance athletes? They're lean, they're thin, they have excellent endurance. Not a whole lot of muscle tone there. Very skinny, very lean. Look at his arms, look at his legs. So is marathoning really that good for your muscles? Is it really good for you? Now this is an extreme example. This is this guy at the beginning of the race. Now look at him by the end of the race. Now, I'm kidding, of course, but this guy actually just ran a marathon. Look at this guy. Look at his legs. Does he look healthy to you? He looks like he can barely stand. And yet, for some, somehow, he dragged himself through 26 miles. By the way, the original marathoner, there's this, you know, this came from Greece, right? Olympus. Olympus. And the guy ran from marathon. And when he got there, this warrior died. That's how marathoning came about. The guy died at the end of his trek to warn somebody about something. So which body is best for health and performance? Well, you can obviously pick examples that you like. 
So I just have a whole list of stuff here, headlines about people dying after marathons. Here's a 22-year-old runner was taken ill, died. And there's a whole bunch. The second runner died. Detroit Marathon, three men died. Um, 26 years old. These people are all relatively young. Another death and havoc and heat mark Chicago race. Runner in Tucson Marathon dies. So you have all these headlines. And these people are all apparently healthy. 34, 48. More deaths, nine runners this year in Germany. Here's a little article. Are you running yourself to death? Participating in a marathon can put severe stress on your body. They found that the blood of marathoners less than 24 hours after a race, and they found high levels of inflammatory and coagulation markers that are also associated with heart attacks. So a lot of studies show the same thing. I'm going to show you a bunch of studies here. Oh, here's a study showing that they want to see if um, marathon runners were at less risk for heart disease than the average person, and the answer was no, they're not. In fact, as an ER doctor and as an internist, I was always taught, oh, you know, if someone's running all the time, well, they can't possibly have a heart attack because they're giving themselves their own stress tests, right? And if they can withstand that, then they shouldn't be getting a heart attack. Not true. Does not protect you at all. High levels of physical fitness do not guarantee absence of significant cardiovascular disease. Here's a review article, 36 cases of heart attack. Sudden death in the world literature, this is back several years ago. The mean age, the average age was 43.8 years. The youngest was 18, the highest was 70. And 50% of all these events occurred within 24 hours of the race. They looked at the effect of a long distance run on cardiac markers in healthy athletes. So they actually checked their blood before the race and then after, and they had elevated levels of troponin. Now, in the emergency department, we check troponin levels to see if you've had a heart attack. So these people, they didn't necessarily have any symptoms, but when they actually checked their blood, they had high troponin levels. That's one study. There's many others that show the same thing. It's a marker of cardiac damage. Here's another thing, same thing. Cardiac troponins increase immediately after the marathon and return to initial values on day one for this particular isotope of, or type of troponin and three days later for this type of troponin. Changes in vascular cardiac function after prolonged strenuous exercise in humans. Prolonged exercise has been shown to result in acute depression and cardiac function. Post-race troponin was elevated. This is amazing. They looked at 13 runners. 12 out of 13 had high troponin and seven were considered enough to be considered a heart attack. Think about that. 50% of these runners actually had enough cardiac damage. Look at this study here. Boom, boom, boom. They were, they were like 40 years old, these guys. And almost all of them had evidence of, a, of heart damage after the race. If they came to the ER that day and we checked their troponin levels, we'd say, we better admit you, you've had a heart attack. More stuff on this. Basically the same thing, and just to show you that this is not just an isolated thing. They've done this study over and over and over again, and they find the same data, that running, at least in a marathon or certain prolonged distances, will cause cardiac damage. Not only is evidenced by elevated troponins, but they actually do echocardiograms, ultrasound pictures of the heart, and show that the left ventricle is not pumping correctly after the race. There's depressed left ventricular function. So there's decrease in cardiac output, ejection fraction, diastolic, posterior wall velocity, blah, blah, blah. We conclude that there's possibly indicating cardiac fatigue. Another thing, uh, study showing the same thing, altered cardiac function, minimal cardiac damage during prolonged exercise. The physiologic stress imposed by the half iron triathlon resulted in reduced left ventricular contractility and altered diastolic filling coupled with cardiac damage in a number of highly trained male triathletes.